Moving swiftly along, next up we would like to invite the president of the Africa Business Angels Network, the one and only Mr. Tom, Tommy Davis. The Honorable Minister, Mr. Ambassador, Chair of Afri Labs, Head of Sahara Sparks, other dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen of the audience. Um, I think that's it for protocol for me, if you don't mind. I've been asked to speak about innovation in the age of data. But before I do that, I'd like to share with you why I'm standing in front of you. I'm standing in front of you because I believe deep in my heart that Africans can build a better Africa. And for us to do that, it is going to take each and every one of us to rethink what we know about our continent. Today, Africa is 55 or 54 countries, depending on who you talk to, a plurality of languages inherited from our colonial masters, a geographic size that takes China, United States, and India combined, and will still have space left to take in Europe. So when we look at things like that, we need to understand that the challenges we face are not singular. It's easy for us to say Africa, but with all due respect to all present, the gentleman sitting in Casablanca has a totally different agenda from the lady sitting in Cape Town. Their history is different, their cultures are different, and therefore, I suggest to you, their futures will be different. So, as we enter the age where we have moved from dot-com to Web 2.0, from cloud to today's big data and tomorrow's IoT, we need to consider this context and this background. We are a cultural people, and our culture defines us. We do things in our peculiar ways, and therefore, as we start to look at the nature of innovation, we need to understand this. First and foremost, what does the age of data bring? It brings a better understanding of ourselves as humankind. It means we will be exposed to information we otherwise did not have. We will be able to tell how people walk, how they sit, how they stand, how they eat, how they sleep. We will be able to tell how our institutions function. We will be able to put our transactions into situations that we otherwise would not think about. Who sitting here 40 years ago could have imagined that we would no longer take the handwritten letter as gospel, but would rely more on the digits and the numbers that you put in to draw from your bank account. When was the last time you wrote a check? Think about that. Today, we talk about driverless cars as if it was something that we thought about just 15, 20 years ago. Elon Musk is talking about going to space. We are in a new world. And yes, we do have poverty. But guess what? 50 years ago, our telephone density was near zero. Today, I doubt, even in the hinterlands of the DRC that has been ravaged by war, whether you will find a group of more than 100 people without having at least one or two mobile phones within them. So let us understand that mobility and cloud will present us with an opportunity. What we do with that opportunity is going to depend 
on what those of you in this room do. Why do I say that? As the previous speakers have said, we are entrepreneur support organizations. Why? Because we believe that entrepreneurship is what is going to build the future of our continent. It is those who have the ability, because they have been exposed, to create jobs for those who have not had that opportunity. Those are going to be the champions of Africa tomorrow. Those are the ones we look to empower. Those are the ones we are looking to encourage. So, as data becomes the new oil, let us not do what oil has done to countries like mine, Nigeria. Let us look beyond and hope that we can take leadership from people like Dubai, who just this week announced that, guess what? We're moving government onto blockchain. And everything we do as a government will be totally transparent to our people. Let us look to people like Elon Musk, who when was asked, what kind of government will you have when we get to Mars? He says, we will have a direct democracy. That means everybody has a say in what happens to them in the future. The challenges of humankind are not going to go away because we have new data. They will remain energy. They will remain food. They will remain habitation. They will remain environment. And most importantly, it will still be population. So, innovation is about doing something new to solve an old problem or creating a new device or a new solution to problems we didn't even know we had. Why is Facebook successful? Because I can find friends I went to high school with who I would otherwise have no way of contacting, a need I did not even know I had. That's innovation, and that is why it is successful. So, ladies and gentlemen, the nature of innovation in the data age will be our ability to turn data into a resource, into raw material upon which we build. But most importantly, what will not change is those who will be successful with innovation are those who will create solutions that delight, solutions that enhance, but more importantly, solutions that help mankind, whether they are in Africa or elsewhere. Thank you very much for listening.